Hi, Kathy Croteau, and this is what I love to do, paint, create, and I hope I can share with you tonight just a little glimpse of what it takes, how easy it is, and I think you'll enjoy it. Starting with my brushes, they could be purchased at Michael's Crafts. This one is really important, the green one. I use that a lot to paint the uh, leaves. And then the filbert here, that's my hydrangea brush that I really like. Um, these I purchased from Donna Dewsbury through Amazon, but Michael's pretty much has the same type of brushes. Um, really important is a good acrylic paint. This paint by Folk Art, you can paint wood, you can paint glass, and you can see it has the little glass on top. And that kind of tells you that you got the right one or the E for enamel on there. The glasses are from Dollar Tree. That's it. You can make them look like a million dollars only buying them for a dollar. I uh, went ahead and painted some leaves on them to expedite it so I can show you uh, how to do the flowers and not have to wait for them to dry. This is my color palette. This is a simple, again, Dollar Tree, $24 paper plates, styrofoam plates that you can use as your palette. So, two sized wine glasses, red and white. I don't drink wine, so I don't know which is which, but I do know that there's two sizes. So, we're gonna start with this one. What to remember when you're painting the glasses is not to have the leaves or the flowers where someone's mouth would be. Remembering to get a lot of paint on the brush. Flip flop it in there, saturate it, press down on it. You don't want to wipe it off. You can see here that I've got a lot on it. It's really a technique that I would advise you to um, try is get an empty paper plate and the motions I'm showing you, try to replicate it and practice. And, and the glasses are very forgiving. If you make a mistake and if you hate what you've done, and believe me, I've been there, you just take it under the water and you take a little bit of a sponge and you can remove the paint. So again, starting here, I'm going to start, press, up, swirl, and down to make a leaf. Press, up, and lift. Press, up, and lift. And then moving it along, leaving room for the flowers. I started painting glass as a way to give back to the people that were very, very kind to us in our time of need. I named these glasses after Brenna and these are called my warrior glasses. And my favorite thing to do is give them to someone that is either fighting something or celebrating something. So here we go again. Again, keeping it low, press, lift, and swipe. Press, lift, and swipe. Again, practice on a styrofoam plate. And it just comes to me, there's really no set pattern that I follow. Again, it's just press, lift, and swipe. And there you have it. Now we're going to have to let those dry. And I can go ahead and start you as I start the flower. Again, having no uh, pattern at all. 
on this. I typically start, and if anybody paints, I think they'll understand when I say this, I kind of feel it as I do it. Uh, so I sort of have my own little modern hydrangea pattern, and it really is just a series of swipes. So this is a small leaf. We'll make this one smaller. Mom, how long for the leaves to dry? Uh, the leaves, depending on the temperature, maybe 10, 15 minutes. And don't be anxious and try it. I've done it, been there, where you say, well, I, I think it's dry. No, really make it dry because what happens is you pick up some of the paint and then the green goes into your white and you want to keep the white white as the base. These just happen to be my favorite colors. So I start with some navy. And you can see, again, it's just sort of a swipe. That's, that's all it is. And I don't clear the brush. I still have the white on it. And moving right along to the teal, I'll put a little bit of teal in there. If it covers the white too much and you can't see the teal, then wipe it off. And then you just go back in. You just have to feel it. It's a flower. There isn't, there isn't a wrong way to make it. So again, I start with the white. I bring my navy in. And you don't want to cover it. At least I don't think you should because with a flower even, there's no direct pattern or no right way or wrong way to do it. You can sort of see the life it's taking. Now this area here, I have a little bit too much blue for my taste, so I put a little bit of white back in. Again, very forgiving. Moving right along to the next one. This one here sort of could be a little bud. So I keep it a little on the smaller side. And again, brought in a lot of blue. I'm gonna go back with white. And then I can go over that again. I can bring the, the teal in. If you put the color on the very wet white paint, it will sort of streak and it really gives you a nice effect on it. You want me to go back to that one? Yeah. Again, you can see I don't have, I'm not following a pattern. It's sort of where it takes me. It's probably my most peaceful thing in my life that I do is paint. A lot of times I'll listen to music. A lot of times I'll pray for the person I'm making them for. And it gives me a piece that I find very hard to replicate in my life. So there you have it. There you have my unpatterned pattern mm -hmm. of hydrangea. What, correct me, Jen, what is this, a, a white wine or I a think red? So, yeah, I think that one is the, yeah, the, so it's the taller. It's not as much of a bulb. So you can see I start with the white. Kind of gives me an idea of how much space I need to fill up. And I made three leaves here, so I just kind of put a couple there like there'll be a bud. That's there. Again, my very unpatterned pattern. And just swipe, just not, not heavily, just lightly, just mix those colors in that are coming from your brush. 
and it really makes, I think, the flower come to life. Sometimes I'll go back in where I need some depth. I think you could see by how easy this is and how forgiving that you really don't have to have painted as many as I do to get really get a nice finished product. What do I love on that? We're gonna fill in these little buds. Just put a little color in it. And start again with the navy. I'm sort of going over the white, between the white. I'm not sure this looks like a hydrangea, but it is my take on it. Go back with a little bit of white there. And as you draw down with the paint, it'll actually start to come to life for you. I always have to check and make sure I finished them. I'll do one more and then I will show you what I do to finish them off to get one complete. Again, you could see not a lot of time. Just sort of gives you an idea of what you need to fill up this space. And again, you can use your own colors. You can colors to match your kitchen, your favorite colors. These happen to be mine. So guess what? If you if I paint for you and you don't give me a color, this is what you'll get. Sometimes I will leave a little bit of a blab on it. Again, I think it it speaks to the character of the flower. Each color you pick up, too, will add something. I don't like that. Very forgiving. Probably the, one of the most forgiving crafts you can do is to paint glass. You can see... Not a lot of the space is covered. I'm going to go back in with white. Sometimes I like it a little goopy. Again, it gives to the character of the flower. Again, it's like taking a test where there are no wrong answers. I'll go back and see sort of what color I want to bring out in that. Okay, I'm going to finish these. 
hopefully they'll be a little dry and I will take the rounded brush and I really don't know what this does except I like it it looks a little finished I will go and put a few dots in the center of the flower Again, random, no pattern, as little or as many as you'd like. And then, again, absolutely no raisin, just sort of my trademark. I add the polka dots randomly where you feel you need something. I could use a few. And then I don't always do this, but I'm going to show you it as an option what you can do, sort of make your paintbrush watery, sort of go back onto the plate and bring the brush just where it starts to round off. You can either I mix all the colors together in doing this, or you can mix just the blues or the whites, but I don't know. I just think it looks a little bit fun to finish it off like this. And then what I will do is Go back in with the navy and just add a dot to finish it. You don't have to add the dot. Well, I've, I've painted these just making polka dots on the rim of the glass. but it's just sort of a little fun way of finishing off the glass. And there you have one that's pretty much finished. I've told you before that I paint these for my granddaughter, Brenna, and I sign it. You obviously don't have to use my signature, but make something cool yourself, your initials or just something that lets you know that you own this, that you did it. And there you have it. That one's done. And I'll do one more quick one in case there's something you missed in, uh, the polka dots. I think we need a little bit more navy. So I'm going to go in again with the polka dot. Again, random. An easy test, no wrong answers. That 
adding the little dots in the flowers. I clearly don't know what it does to it, but I like it. And again, going to draw from the navy. You can even add a little white in it. Just make it kind of soupy. This is what I need to do when I need to chill out. <laughs> so I hope it brings as much enjoyment to everyone in peace as it does to me because I can totally get lost in it. Again, going back with the dots. That needs another stripe. I feel very fortunate to be able to do this and that's why I pay it forward. It was a lot of years that I didn't think I'd have the use of my fingers. So it's kind of God's message to me. He still wants me to paint. There you have a, a white wine glass, I'm assuming, <laughs> and a red wine glass finished. It's nice to see both sides. What's nice about it, too, is when you look inside the glass, when you mix the colors, you could see the mixture of the colors. So it's as pretty after you drink the beverage as it is before. I didn't sign this one. So I'm gonna go and put Rana's signature on it up here. And there you have it. Thank you, CBEF, for hosting these lessons. I hope everyone enjoys it as much as I do. Take two. I forgot to add something very, very important. After you've painted and after you've completed your glasses, set your oven to 225 degrees. Let it heat up. Put the glasses in for approximately 10 to 15 minutes on 225. They're going to they're going to be hot when when they finish even at 225. So wait, don't try to move them because if you jostle them, they will break much more easy uh, than if they were cold. Uh, and then take them out. You, you can say wash for how them long? about right. 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. And then you can wash them lightly. Never put them in the dishwasher, okay? Because you will wind up with an empty Dollar Tree glass <laughs> where your painting used to be. Do you put them on a cookie sheet upside down? I don't. I just I just put them on the rack. Okay. And because typically we usually have paint on the bottom. So it just it works at 225. It's so low that that's not a problem. Mm -hmm.